I'm Amanda Freed. I'm Leah Amico. I'm Soraya Flowers. I'm Lovie Jung. I'm Mike Candrea, head softball coach of the women's Olympic softball team. Welcome to Sports School. In the following segments, we're going to talk about the fielding principles of a ground ball. We're going to begin by sharing with you information on the ready position. We're going to talk about fielding the ground ball, securing the ground ball, transferring into our footwork to throw, and then we're going to also talk about fielding ground balls to our glove hand side and to our backhand side. We'd like to begin by talking about the ready position. One of the most important elements of fielding ground balls is to charge the ground ball. And I think it begins by your ready position. As an infielder, you've got to anticipate every ball is going to be hit to you. So we want to do something to get our legs ready to charge the ground ball. There's two basic ways that infielders will pre prepare to charge the ground ball. The first is using stationary movement. And I'm going to have Lovey demonstrate, but stationary movement is nothing more is to make sure that you're light on your feet and you've got some movement. She is subtly moving to her left and her right. The second is more of a dynamic movement where she's actually going to walk toward home plate and then get set to move. Now, a couple key elements in the ready position. Number one, you've got to be prepared to move four different ways. As an infielder, I don't know where the ball's going to go, so I've got to be prepared to charge the ball, but I also have to be prepared to take a crossover step and go to my left or to my right, or I might even have to handle a pop-up that goes behind me. As the ball enters the hitting zone as an infielder, you have to be prepared to go either way. Okay, so you have to make sure that when the ball's entering the zone, that I'm square to home plate. I can't afford to cheat with my left foot forward because now I can't move to my left. If I cheat with my right foot forward, I can't move to my right. So we want to make sure that we're square to the plate, shoulders and hips are squared, so that we can move in four different ways. Approaching the ground ball is a very important aspect of infield play. There's two types of ways that you can approach a ground ball. And let's compare it to uh, flying a helicopter or an airplane. A helicopter will fly and land, and kind of fly high and land very quickly. Uh, airplane, on the other hand, has to gradually start coming down to the runway. Well, as an infielder, to field a ground ball, you want to gradually start getting down. So one of the most important concepts of fielding a ground ball is to gradually get your center of gravity down as you approach. The second thing is we want to try to keep the ball on our glove hand side. So one thing that we're going to try to do is we're going to try to round our ground ball, so we're not going to take a direct path to the ball. We're going we're to kind of banana around the ground ball, which allows us to get our momentum moving toward our target. And I'm going to have Lovey kind of demonstrate here the two approaches. If Lovey gets in her stance and I draw a straight line here, you notice that if I roll this ground ball, Lovey's going to kind of round around this ball so that she moves through it. And this is a very important concept when it comes to fielding. See how she moves around the ball. The other thing is as she approaches the ball, she wants her hands toward the ball. Okay, so as she gradually, as she gets to the ball, she's going to open up her glove, and then now she's going to be in a good fielding position to make the play. So on your approach, make sure, number one, that we land like an airplane, not a helicopter, and number two, that we kind of round the ball so that we can use our momentum to go toward our throw. Obviously, the approach to the ground ball can be a little bit different. If it's a slow roller, then obviously we've got to charge the ball hard and we're going to try to round that ball. If it's a routine ground ball, then we're going to be able to round the ball also. The only time you wouldn't approach the ball that way is if the ball's hit right at you hard and all you've got time to do is react. Many a times when you're playing third base or first base, you're playing closer to home plate, 
therefore your ready position is a lot lower and a lot of times you have no time to do anything other than to react to the ball. But primarily on a routine ground ball, we want to approach like an airplane, we want to round the ball, we want to use our footwork to get our momentum going toward our throw. Okay, the next phase of the fielding principles is going to be actually securing the ball or making the catch. Now, a couple of concepts that you can use to position your body in the right position. Number one, we always want to feel the ball off to our glove hand side of our body. Obviously, this is where our hand is more relaxed. If we move our hand to our throwing side, then the forearm gets very tight and our glove starts to close. So one of the concepts is to keep the glove on the glove side of your body, okay? If you divide your body in half, Lovey will always try to overplay the ball to her glove side. Secondly, when she gets in her fielding position, she's going to stagger her feet. Her left foot is slightly in front of her right foot, about toe to instep, and this allows her to stay on the balls of her feet versus if I square my feet up and I try to squat down, I get on my heels. So we want to stagger our feet so that we can get our butt down. We have a nice flat back so that she's feeling the ball out in front of her nose, okay? Secondly is the hand positioning. There's two ways that you can secure the ball. One, you can put your hand up right close to the glove. The second is you can put your hand to the side of the glove. One quick reminder, if you're going to put your hand on top of the glove, make sure your fingers are pointed up toward the sky. The last thing we want you to do is put your fingers uh, toward the ball because now you've got a chance of hurting yourself. If you keep your fingers up, the ball may hit your fingers, but it will not do any damage. So those are two ways that you can prepare to secure the ball. Last but not least, once we feel the ball and we're in a good fielding position, now we need to secure the ball. And this is very important. As an infielder, we're going to use our glove to redirect the ball. We're not actually going to catch the ball. We want to get that ball out of the glove as quick as possible. So the one thing that I want you to think about is, is it quicker for me to take the ball and glove to my throwing hand, or is it quicker to take my throwing hand to the ball? And I hope your answer is take your throwing hand to the ball because that's the proper way. So when Lovey secures the ball, she's going to secure it by taking her throwing hand over the ball, and now she's going to pull the ball out of the glove, transfer into her footwork, and now she's preparing to make a good, strong throw. Now that we've approached the ground ball and we've secured the catch, we need to transition into our throw. And this is where footwork becomes very important. In the infield, you're going to find three different types of footwork that are used. The first is where the ball's right at us and we can step with our right foot toward the target. So Levy's going to feel the ball, step with her right foot toward her target, turn her hips and shoulders, which is very important, and now she's ready to make a strong, accurate throw. The second way is to replace our feet. Now this one here is if you're moving fast through the ball, now she's going to replace her right foot where her left foot is, and then again get her hips and shoulders turned toward the target and ready to make a throw. The third way that we can also transfer into our footwork is by stepping behind. There are times when our momentum is taking us away from our target, and the quickest and most efficient way is to step behind ourselves so that we can get our hips and shoulders turned. This would be on a play up the middle. If I was a shortstop, and if Lovey was going to her glove side and she'd feel that ball, the quickest way for her to get turned is to step behind, get her hips and shoulders turned toward her target, and make a strong, accurate throw. Footwork is very important to put your body in a proper position to make a strong throw. Obviously, not every ball is going to be hit right at you as an infielder. So you have to be prepared to move to both your glove hand side or your backhand side. The move is initiated with a crossover step, and it will vary depending on your ready position. If you are more of a stationary uh, ready position, a lot of times all you're going to do is probably pivot if you're going to your glove hand side, cross over, and go. If you're more 
dynamic in your movement, a lot of times you will see a quick jab step to get your weight on your left foot so that you can make a strong crossover to go to your left. But the most important thing here is to read the ball. If the ball's hit hard, the deeper your angle must be to get to that ball. The softer the ball's hit, the more shallower angle you can take. Now, to go to our glove hand side, we're going to have Lovey start. She's going to read the ball. She's going to cross over. And as she approaches that ball, if she can't get in front of it, then she's going to reach out, glove open, and now she's going to secure the catch, and now she's going to move directly into her footwork that allows her to make a strong, accurate throw. Now, this is a play right here where a lot of times there's an advantage of stepping behind to get your shoulders turned. Right there, step behind, she gets her hips and shoulders turned, she's ready to make a strong throw. The most difficult play in our game is the backhand, but this is one that I like kids to feel comfortable with. We do a lot of work working on the backhand. The backhand is a play that you can't get in front of, that it's almost a do or die, and the only way you're going to catch the ball is if you backhand the ball. Now, if you get to the ball with your left foot forward, obviously, the key here is that we want to feel the ball out in front of us, and we want to use our elbow as a hinge to give with the ball. If we happen to get to the ball with our right foot, then we do the same thing. We open up by using our elbow as a hinge. Now, there's an advantage. If I get there with my right foot, now all I can do is gather my weight on the inside of my back leg. I can come up and make a strong throw, plant and throw. If I get to the ball with my left foot, I'm going to have to take a quick step to put myself in a position to throw the ball. So either way, the techniques are the same. If we're feeling a short hop, we want to kind of go get the ball. If we're feeling a long hop, we're able to give with the ball a little bit and use the elbow as a hinge. Okay, another element is a ball that you can't really get around that you're going to rake through it where it's easier to position on the backhand, move through it, come up and make a throw. Okay, those are the three main ways that we backhand a ball, either off our right foot, off our left foot, or we rake through it. Okay, an important principle when we're securing ground balls, remember one thing, if you get a short hop, you have to go get the short hop. You don't want to give with it, turn it into an in-between hop. If you get the long hop, then you can give with it. You can catch it like you're catching an egg. Okay, but those are very important elements of securing the ground ball. I've got Amanda and Leah here to help demonstrate the principles of fielding ground balls from the outfield. Now there's three basic types of footwork that you're gonna find as an outfielder. The first is on a quick play uh, maybe to second base or to third base, they're going to feel the ball just like an infielder. There's two basic ways. One off your glove foot side and one off your throwing foot side. And both of these are very, very adequate. Um, they're easy to use, but you're going to try to find out which one works best for your outfielders. I'm going to have Leah and Amanda demonstrate, first of all, feeling the ground ball like an infielder. She keeps the ball on her glove side replaces her feet, gets her hips and shoulders turned, she's ready to make a quick throw. Okay, and that's great from the left-hander's viewpoint. Now, from the right-hander's viewpoint, here's Amanda. The one thing you notice here is that they really stagger their feet, which allows them to get into that throwing position a little quicker. And once again, the key here, when you're feeling the ball like an infielder, is keep the ball on your glove side. Because any time that ball gets over to your throwing side, your arm gets very stiff, your glove starts closing, and that's when you have problems. The next one would be a do or die play, when we're going to throw a runner out, maybe trying to score at the plate. In this case, there's two methods we can use, one with our glove foot forward, the other is with our throwing foot forward. We're going to have Amanda demonstrate glove foot forward. As you can see, as she approaches the ball, she kind of stutters her feet, get herself in preparation to get in a good position and then she comes up and gets into a crow hop. Now that's the difference you're going to see with an outfielder versus an infielder. 
An infielder doesn't have to make a long throw. An outfielder has to utilize their legs. So one technique they're going to use is going to be a crow hop, where they're going to actually come up, be aggressive with their legs, lead with their heel to get their hips and shoulders turned in preparation to throw. Now Leah will do the other technique. She goes with her throwing foot forward. Both are very effective. It just depends on comfort here. What is the only difference? The difference is a half a step. Okay? What Leah's doing right now, it takes a half a step to get her to secure the ball, where Amanda, with her glove foot forward, she feels the ball, and she comes into her throwing motion a little bit quicker. Okay, one more time, Leah. Very nice. Good long arm circle. And Amanda. Glove foot forward. Crow hop and throw. Okay, another method that I wanted to make you aware of is sometimes you're playing on fields that aren't like this. They can be very rough. And the worst thing that can happen to an outfielder, since this is our last line of defense, is the ball getting by us. So another method that we use is to get down on the knee. If we're not real sure of the, the, the ground and we haven't picked a good hop, we can get down on the knee and our right knee or our throwing foot knee will get down and that will become a barrier. We want to try to close this gap here. Now we're going to feel the ball with two hands and then we're going to come up into our crow hop and make a throw. Let's have Leah demonstrate. Going down on a knee. As you can see she gets down very easily. Closes that gap between her legs so the ball can't get by her. And she's still in a good position that she can come up, get her hips and shoulders turned and make a throw. One more, Leah. Very nice. And Amanda. Good. Very nice. So those are the three ground ball fielding techniques that we use in the outfield. Okay, one is an infielder style where we're making a quick play. Two is a do or die when we've got to throw someone out, either glove foot forward or throwing foot forward. And the last is going down on one knee to make sure we don't get the bad hop. In review of our fielding principles, we began by talking in the infield about our ready position. Remember, there's two types of ready position. One is a stationary ready position, and two is a really an active or dynamic ready position where we're actually walking forward. Remember, the key is when that ball enters the strike zone, we have to make sure that we're square to the plate. Secondly, our approach to the ball. We want to round the ball. We want to try to arrive at the ball like an airplane instead of a helicopter so that we're gradually stalking the ball, but we're rounding the ball to keep the ball on the glove hand side of the body. If we don't round the ball and we start moving through the ball, what happens is the ball gets on the wrong side of our body. So that's the purpose of rounding the ball. Now, once we've approached the ball, we want to make sure that we are feeling the ball with our feet staggered, our hands out in front of our nose. And if you can imagine a triangle right here, my feet are the base of the triangle. I want to secure the ball at the apex of the triangle. Throwing hand, I want it close to the glove. Fingers up if you want to cover the ball this way or fingers to the side of the ball. And then from there, we got to trans fur into our throwing position. We talked about footwork. First type we talked about was stepping forward with our right foot. The second type was replacing our feet. And the third type was if the ball took us away from our target and we had to try to get our hips and shoulders turned that we could actually step behind, which is an efficient way to get in the throwing position. We moved to the outfield and we did ground ball work. Three types. First one is the infielder style for a quick play. Second is a do or die when we're trying to throw a runner out. Either glove foot forward or throwing foot forward. Okay? Depends on what you want to do. And the third thing was getting down on one knee. So now you have all the principles of fielding ground balls. Work hard, have some fun, and the, game, the name of the game is repetition. The more ground balls you take, 
the better you're going to get at it.